On December 21st, 2020, people are claiming all kinds of things. That the world as we know it is going to end. That people are gonna get superpowers. That people are gonna be stuck in personal hells, and personal heavens. And some people are even saying that that rapture that people, that Christians and all this have been talking about for thousands of years is finally gonna happen. But what exactly is happening on December 21st of this year? Hello my Luminites, it is Ivy and welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new here, hello, my name is Ivy, also known as Intuitive Ivy M here on this channel and on intuitiveivy.com where I do tarot and oracle card readings. Now this channel is all about the magical, the mystical, and supernatural things. So if that's all something that you vibe with, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button and becoming another member of our growing and luminite family. Today we're going to be talking about something that has just been spreading around YouTube like crazy. December 21st, 2020, otherwise known as the Great Conjunction. We're going to be talking all about this Great Conjunction that is happening on December 2020 and the effects that it's going to play on our planet for years to come. Now, while I do study astrology, I'm not exactly a big expert on it, so I went ahead and I made sure that I watched other spiritual YouTubers that have way more knowledge and experience than me. I went ahead and read countless articles and put together this video. Let's take a look at what's going to be happening here on Earth, astronomically speaking. So on December 21st, Jupiter and Saturn are going to meet on what happens to be the very first day in the winter solstice. So what does the term the Great Conjunction mean? even mean. So when Jupiter and Saturn, which are our two largest planets in the solar system, come together, it's termed the Great Conjunction because they're the two greatest planets in our solar system. <laughs> and this is actually going to be an event that we'll be able to be witnessed worldwide. So they're going to be so close to each other that they're that when you look at them in, their, in the sky, they're actually going to look like one big star. You know how they talk about that great big star when Jesus was born? Sort of like kind of what you would picture that to look like in your head. That's basically what it would look like. And this is going to be the closest that these planets have become together in, guess what, 397 years. So let's talk a little bit about the history brought by the Great Conjunction. So a lot of wild and historical events have happened around the time that this Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn merging were witnessed. So while this sort of conjunction happens every like decade or so, the last time that the planets were this close together was back in 1623 when Galileo roamed the earth. The time before that was in 1226 when the empire of Genghis Khan reached its end and the legend of Robin Hood began to take shape. So what makes this great conjunction in particular so special? I mean we do get one every decade or so, so what makes this one different and more special than any other conjunction that we've witnessed? Well, since 1802, great conjunctions have been happening around the Earth signs, which include Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, with the exception of one trio in Libra that happened in like 1981. So all these great conjunctions since the 1800 being in Earth signs means that they're focused on materialistic things. And looking at the tarot, if you know anything about tarot, that is why the suit of pentacles, which symbolizes materialistic things, represents the element of earth. So this is why since the 1800s, we've seen such a drastic movement in all things regarding material and materialistic things from the quick growth of like man-made objects, things that accumulate wealth, land ownership, and commodify and commodifying the earth's natural natural resources. But if we take, pay attention to our, the way that our ecosystem is and the way that it, it's sort of beginning to deteriorate, it's honestly becoming clear that Earth is not going to be able to support our carbon hood footprint much longer. It's obviously time for change, time for growth, and time for transformation. It's time for the air signs to take over our planet. So the era of earth sign is coming to a close and looking at the zodiac, we see that the next element over is going to be air. So for the next 150 years, all the great conjunctions are going to be taking place in air sign, which includes Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. So if earth signs rule material, 
what do air signs rule? So air signs actually rule mental activity, such as intellect, the ability to reason, thought, knowledge, and comprehension. Air signs also rule beginnings, friendship, clarity, and a positive expression. So now this new era of knowledge and mental activity is going to be met by our two biggest planets, Saturn and Jupiter. So Jupiter rules over growth. It also rules over philosophy and higher knowledge. Saturn rules over structure, rules, and life lessons. Now you have this planet of growth and higher knowledge merging with the age of knowledge and transformation and coming together with the planet of structure and life lessons. Because these two planets are coming together in the innovative air sign, not just in the air element, but in the sign of Aquarius. And staying here for the coming year of 2021, there is going to be a sense of like forward thinking progressiveness that's going to shift the way that we operate personally and also on a societal level. Cue in the age of Aquarius. <laughs> So whether you listen to all these spiritual YouTubers talking about this or whether you're familiar with that hit song by that band Fifth Dimension called The Age of Aquarius, it's honestly become a term that's just becoming more vastly familiar among the people. It has people literally sitting on the, on the edge of their seats anticipating that it's coming and it's finally happening. It's, we're finally going into this great conjunction into the air sign particularly starting with the age of Aquarius. Why does this age of Aquarius have people so excited and at the edge of their seats and being like, oh my gosh, the world is gonna end, something's gonna change? Well, there's obviously reasons for that. So when we enter the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius energy loves to rebel against the status quo. And we're gonna be looking toward a more innovative future. We're gonna be focused on the good of humanity. So big changes are happening on a big, huge world societal level. Expect revolutionary societal shifts to take place, including a big, heavier, focus on humanitarian issues, a great emphasis on community and working together, and unexpected advancements in technology that's going to help support the needs of the people. With the year that we've been having, we're already beginning to see this shift into the age of Aquarius. Seeing all these shifts in equality and social justice issues and is something that's not only going to affect society as a whole, but it's going to affect us personally as well. We're going to become, we ourselves on a personal level, not just on a societal level, but us on a personal level, we're going to become inspired to embrace our own inner social justice and we're going to fight for a more equal future for everyone. Now this great conjunction happening on December 21st is one that's going to happen at zero degrees in Aquarius. And zero degrees is a degree that is known for beginnings, new beginnings, and new cycles. Anytime a planet is at its zero degrees of a sign, it's charged with the energy of a fresh new start. And combined with this forward thinking sign of Aquarius, this is a cosmic event that's honestly going to usher us directly into an exciting and unknown future. So honestly, don't resist the changes that are going to start happening. If you just roll with it and you roll with this progress, you're going to find yourself adapting and like evolving into a better version of yourself personally. So the age of Aquarius is also a time where we're going to begin to see more people embracing who they truly are and what they want to pursue in life. Even if that means that it's something beyond what most people consider ordinary. The modern Aquarius is actually ruled by the planet Uranus, a planet that's honestly known to intensify rebellion, freedom seeking. It's also going to create some, you know, rebellious freedom liberating and innovative flavor into this great conjunction. People are going to seek out means beyond what's considered normal. You're going to see more peop more and more people begin leaving their 9 to 5 job and actually pursuing what they want to do in with life, even though it's not something that most people typically go for. When I say this, I don't mean that they're going to be focusing more on, you know, more materialistic money things. 
if anything, people are going to be focused less on money and more focused on what's right for themselves, what's right for other people, and their own personal happiness. And of course, their friendships with other people. Aquarius is the opposite sign of Leo. So Leo makes us unique. Leo is the creator, the, le the, the leader, the one, the me, the I, the I am. But Aquarius takes Leo's unique qualities and taking them to the next level. So instead of just focus on the I am and the what I want to do, it's more on the we and what we want to do and just basically creating those bonds with society, with the community, and getting rid of hate and getting rid of all these negative feelings and negative energies and focusing more on like, hey, you're actually a lot like me and I'm actually a lot like you. And it's going to be focusing more on building friendships and getting together as a society and, you know, actually uniting together. You know, united we stand, divided we fall. And this whole thing about division and dividing us, especially with everything that we've gone through this year, it's coming to a close. Instead of being divided, we're going to be united as a whole again. We're going to be able to acknowledge each person's uniqueness. During this new age, we're going to see a lot of new types of energies that are going to be discovered. Other likely developments that we're going to see in this era are artificial intelligence, more space travel beyond what we've seen, and connections with other forms of life. Aquarius is the most global sign in the zodiac. It rules networks and communities based on mutual vision. So in the next 2,000 years, there's going to be no more place for these hierarchical cultures and extreme political societies and the extreme political doctrines. Aquarius is democratic. So what about all these psychic abilities and all that other spiritual stuff that people are talking about. So Jupiter and Saturn conjunction with Aquarius is honestly about the benefits of, cre of creating a new system for all people, not just for those with money or with power, but it's also going to affect us on an individual level. And we're going to have a more opportunity to just release like old drama and negative emotions. We'll also be able to swap out like worn out spiritual methods for more effective ones that are going to make us happier and just honestly just more energetically aligned. Because this era is going to be focusing on creating a more accepting society in which we're all free to be happy and to thrive and to love. I can see why this is an era that some people are saying is going to spark new psychic abilities and it's going to be easier to open up your chakras. Everything vibrates at a frequency and everything has energy. The society that we've built up at up to this point has been vibrating on a lower and a energetic level but now with the age of Aquarius as we move into an era of love and equality and community and friendship the whole earth's energy is also going to be vibrating at that same frequency the frequency of love the frequency of love is what many experts especially law of attraction expert deem to be the highest frequency that we can achieve and of course if this is going to be the energy that we're vibrating on a societal level, it's going to have extraordinary effects on us. It's gonna make us more joyful and accepting. We're gonna be able to feel love for others easier. And we're gonna be able to find peace within ourselves. Because of all of this, I honestly do think that it's a huge possibility that our chakras are going to be easier to open, that it's going to be easier to access these psychic gifts, and it's just going to allow us to have a whole new insight that we never even knew we were capable of. So, my question is, are you guys ready for the Age of Aquarius? That is it, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I read so many articles and watched so many videos from so many people. I will list down below some of the resources that I use, some articles, some videos that I watched, um, and how I gathered up all this information for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!